And I got a question from Mark Parker if I do any research before my trip. And yes, I do. And I thought I'd answer it with a video because it could be useful to other people. And I also want to know what you guys do, what kind of research you guys do before you go out. I'll share my process here uh, in the video and if anybody has any additional tip that they use, please put it in the comments below so we can all kind of learn from it. So let's just dive into it. And my first thing that I do is books. I really like books and I tend to buy books even though I'm traveling and shouldn't be doing it. I should be keeping down a weight. I still buy them because I just love to have them. And one thing I like to do when I come to a new place is go to old bookshops, used bookshops, and see if they have any local, um, local bird books from an area. And I was visiting Cumbria recently and I picked up this one uh, from a really nice bookshop in uh, Carlisle. Uh, Booker's Bookend, I think it was called. Really good one. They got a basement with just filled with uh, all kinds of nature and wildlife books. And these kind of books are great because they're written by like local birders and they have very detailed knowledge of you know, small areas um, that you would just never have heard of unless you're actually out in the field with these people. So I love these kind of books and they're very, very good for birds, but they sometimes have information on other types of wildlife as well. Uh, a book for all the UK, Where to Watch Birds in Britain is a really good starting point. Um, quite quite a lot of places, a lot of them are reserved, so you, they're kind of known anyways, but quite a few of them aren't, and they got detailed records of what kind of species you might find there. So that's a great one. Best one I've probably picked up for Scotland is Scottish Highlands, uh, best bird watching sites. This is a series of books. I've seen these before, best bird watching sites. And uh, after having read this one, I keep, use, I keep referring to this all the time. Um, I will buy more of these, definitely. And there's a good section on mull here. It says Highlands. Uh, mull isn't really in the Highlands, but it also includes hand on mull and sky. So very handy for me here. And as you can see here on the map of Mull, it's got quite a few locations for an island the size of Mull. And what's good about this one is it gives really good detailed knowledge by, you know, kind of like this one. It's a birder, a person really interested in wildlife and birds who knows a lot about the highlands and some of the islands. And it also has wildlife um, in it, so it'll mention wildlife, you know, what kind of wildlife you can find in the places they mention as well. So this is what I've been using here on Mull, and I've just been picking the places that are close to me or some that are further away that I really want to explore. And on that, I've, I don't know, maybe you guys have probably come across this one before if you're from the UK, photographing wildlife in the UK. I quite like it. It's got loads of areas, kind of like these other ones, of places where you can see wildlife. But it take, but it has the point of view of photography. So it's always about how do you, where do you go to photograph these things, and a little bit on techniques, how to get close to them as well. I think the only down point about this one is that a lot of the places in this are are nature reserves or paid for hides. They're set up places. There are a few, there are not everything, definitely not. It is a good book. I would, I would recommend getting it, but it wouldn't be my first choice. I mean, something like this is absolutely my first choice. This is kind of cool because it's more, it's on photography, and he's got loads of good photos in here, uh, and also places you can go. So I would, I think this book would be perfect it was, if it was all places that were more, you know, Places that were scouting or weren't like the familiar ones or the paid for heights that are already set up. But still a good a good resource to use. My second option is obviously gonna be the internet. I should just Google it. That's usually um, how I would do if I'm abroad somewhere, I would just go where to find wildlife and where I am. Uh, the top wildlife places to go to um, wherever I am. A lot of the times, especially here in the UK, I get local nature reserves pop up. They can be good, uh, depending on what they're like. Some of them are very, I find them to be very fenced off. You can't really go where you want to go. So 
It's a bit of a hit and miss with those. Um, I, one site that often comes up when you search for this, or you could just go directly to the site, is Fat Birder. They do a lot of detailed kind of places wherever you go. And they also have, I think they have links to people that you could meet up with, either guides that some of them for free, some of them paid. Um, so you can find a lot of good resources there and they'll also have resources for, they'll also tell you which books to get, identification books and not sure if they do habitat or location books as well but it's possible because they are kind of a location guide for these things. So that's a really good one. If you're in Scotland, SOC, uh, Scottish Trust for Ornith Scottish Ornithology Club is a really good one um, and they have some they got detailed stuff on um, up sightings now for migration sightings. So they'll update regularly with that for everything that comes in during migration, which is great if you want to try and get photos of some of those species, which you might not normally see here, but sometimes they land here to, but sometimes they land in the UK to stop off before they migrate on further north. They also have an app. A uh, free app which is called SOC where to watch and as you can see here it is filled with little dots all over Scotland and each one of these is our places in a certain area so I'll go up here lock lock you uh, and even when it comes into this as a sea lock it's got five locations that you should go to around this area and as you go down here it'll tell you exactly how to get there or if there's a walk from a car park over here it says and it says what kind of species you get there this is for a seabird so you get raised both the guillemot, black guillemot, gannet, fulmar a whole list of other stuff and it'll tell you does it tell you it looks like a little bit of detail on what time of year they're there but maybe not so much for that you want to go into places like Bird Track. Um, they got sightings listings, so you can see what type of year, what time of year they've been sighting, sighted at a certain location. And also, there's books that will tell you identification books and other books that will tell you what time of year they will be breeding, what time of year they will be um, kind of wintering, so and migrating. So those are the kind of things you might have to go elsewhere to find out. Um, I know that for Scotland's Birds of Scotland, I think it is, I, th I should have an online copy of this somewhere, but it has really good detailed uh, knowledge on the exact uh, kind of the exact timings of when they've been starting to breed, when they come to the country and things like that. Obviously these things change a little bit due to global warming and these kind of things, but it's generally a fairly good one. Uh, I've heard people talk about uh, eBird, uh, somebody mentioned that in a comment recently as well that they use. I've started to check it out and it's, it looks like a really good one. Uh, but maybe, maybe for UK we have so many over here that do it locally like BirdTrack and there's a few other ones as well. SOC requests you to update with sightings and all of that. So every, I feel like every knowledge is going everywhere. And I'm not sure how good they are sharing all the information. If they share it, great. Um, but eBird, e I think, is a really good one, depending on where you are. So those will kind of tell you the timings of the species, when you can find them there. Other than that, uh, I ask people locally. I usually stay, I usually meet the people who, whose place that I'm staying at, uh, whether if it's a uh, whether if it's an Airbnb bed and breakfast or if it's I'm doing these kind of house sits now, so whether I'm stay whether I'm staying with somebody, I'll ask them like I'll just and here on places like Mall, people are expected to come see wildlife, so they kinda of often know, they'll tell you an area or something like that you can go to and check that out. If you see people out with bins or you know, camera equipment that looks like they're into wildlife photography, just start talking to them and you'll often find some good advice. And I use other um, things for research as well, such as what I use, the photographer ephemeris, I'll use that for sunset, sunrise and you know, moon, moon phases, when, when and where the moon's going to come out. Um, that's a really good one because you can also go in and put in height for the mountains and you can know exactly when the sun is going to come over a certain mountain not just the sunrise because if you're in a mountainous area sunrise is never actually when the sun comes up over the mountain 
Um, so that's a really good one. I really like that. And I'm using the tie table. My tie times is what I use here for the UK. It might be all over the world. I'm not sure. Um, but I'll use that for, for certain species that I might need to know that. Uh, other than that, just weather reports. Just what kind of weather I'm expecting. Do I want to go out for a an early sunrise or do I sleep in a little bit because you got nice diffuse light then you know those are the kind of things that I'll look up. Uh, next stage after that is going out and do some recce and I usually always do recce with my camera anyway so I'll just go out and you know maybe come across something I'll take some photos or I'll just make notes to come back to a place. So that's basically my process it's not very detailed or anything like that I, I kind of do an overall thing do the Google search, come up with some respectable website or blogs that I like to look off and I'll see a place on a map but I'll also go check um, the habitat on Google Maps or OS Maps um, that I have. Um, that's another good resource actually, OS Maps. I just signed up to this, uh, what is it called, it's Outdoors GPS because a lot of places here on Mall specifically, especially here on Mall, I get no signal from my phone for most of the island. But this app here, Outdoor GPS, subscribe to that, £20 um, per year, and you can basically download any OS map for any place in the UK, which is absolutely amazing. And it works off your GPS, so I don't need a signal to go out, and it doesn't even take that much battery. So that that's really helpful. And that will also have, you know, like, detail kind of stuff when there's a woodland or anything like that it'll tell you those kind of things if there's a river these kind of things that I'll often check out a map because um, I like to I like to go to certain habitats either the wooded area so places with a river or nice coastlines so checking out the map for it checking out the satellite view on um, Google Earth can give you you know on Google Maps can give you a good indication of what you might find there um, and especially here in the UK, I have experience with that before because I used to work here and still work a bit as an ecologist, so I have that kind of built up a little bit of knowledge there. But that's stuff that you learn as you go as well, um, especially from identification books. They'll always have a little bit of the habitat of the species and book, book and websites for you know national trusts so or these kind of things. They'll also have uh, stuff on habitats and what kind of species you find in the different habitats. So anyways, that's, that's kind of what I do. And um, I'd like to be, I probably want to be even better at the research stuff. And I'm always trying to find better website, better books, or just different books so I know uh, where I can go at any, big, at any one time. Anyways, that's my process. I'd love to hear what your guys' process is. Does anybody have any kind of key websites that they use or any books they swear by for finding, researching what kind of wildlife you want to go out and photograph. I hope this was useful to somebody out there and it'll be very useful for everyone if people share in the comments what they use and if you have any good one please put them in the comments and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.